Welcome to DICTA, your weekly dose of law school and bar exam info. I'm Carrie Ann. And I'm Puyan, and we're the co founders of Vinco. And today, we're going to talk about ways you can land your dream internship. So, we've sort of broken this down into three categories. Yeah. First, we're going to talk about things that we did to prepare for interviews ourselves. Um, tips for during the interview mm -hmm. and some things that we're looking for now that we're on the other side of the spectrum and we are employers looking for interns. The tables have turned. Right? So the main thing I did to prepare really was I met with career services a lot at my law school and practiced. I always felt better going into things um, if I had practiced. So I was applying for a lot of prosecutor internships because, you know, I was going to be a prosecutor. <laughs> So that was a lot of hypos, and I went through a lot of them with career services and with my friends and family members. So that was my my big preparation tip. What did, what did you do? Slightly different tactic, I think. So my applications were across the board. I really wanted to just try a little bit of everything to see what I liked, what I could see myself doing for the as a career. Um, I recall I had in interview with a personal injury firm in somewhere in New Jersey and what I did for that specific interview really is uh, what do you say like it's like a microcosm of of what I do in all of my interviews um, I really researched the interviewer I called the office and I asked the receptionist to tell me who will be interviewing me and you can really get a lot more information than you think out of people with just a phone call, especially if you're really um, apologetic and, and sound like you really need help. People are happy to help you. So, so I just basically began to do my research. I created a list of everyone at that firm. Uh, and then I began researching them, specifically where did they go to law school, what did they study, uh, what were their interests, kind of creepy stuff. I think there's a word for that. It might be called stalking. Stalking, yeah. harassment, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, it worked. <laughs> so basically, I knew everything about my employer before I walked in there, and I also reached out to other attorneys in that field to see if they knew the person, to ask them what they should recommend I speak about. And I also tried to find parallels between what that firm did specifically, like including the cases they've litigated and experience that I have through law school just to act as like some talking points during the interview because you don't want there to be lulls or awkward gaps. You want it to smooth, um, flow pretty smoothly. Yeah. Be but, but you're getting ahead of yourself. We're not to point to yet. Okay. All right. All right. So, so that's basically what I did for that firm and almost every other internship I applied for during law school. So I think between the two of us, if you combine our strategies together, that's a pretty thorough approach, right? If you do the research that yeah. Puyan did and the practice that I did, you'd be setting yourself up to walk into yeah, the interview. I did practice as well. And I did research as well, <laughs> but not maybe not to the extent the other yeah, person did. Yeah, I was, I was like not the type of person to really practice that much, but I was told it's important, so I did it. But honestly, oftentimes I found that the questions I practiced and the routines that I practiced didn't reflect at all what the actual interview turned out to be, with yeah. some exception. I mean, I'm definitely glad I practiced one or two questions I practiced typically showed up at the interview. I think it depends also what area of law exactly, you're going into yeah. because I was asked a lot of hypothetical questions like here's a fact pattern, what's legal? Right. So that definitely is something you can practice for. Just thinking on your feet is a skill. So Definitely. So for point two now, tips for things during the interview, this was my one like little secret, one thing I did for myself. So I could get very nervous before an interview because um, you want them to like you, you're selling yourself. So I used to remind myself that they're also trying to sell me mm -hmm. and that I am a valuable commodity. I'm a hard worker. I'm smart. I, you know, talk myself up and remember that I have to want to work with them Definitely. as much as they want me there. So that kind of helped me to even the playing field in my mind a little bit and to calm my nerves and so I could show more confidently. Definitely. That's a great idea. I mean, I didn't do that as much until the end. And it's kind of funny, now that I think about it, there were a few jobs where halfway through the interview, 
um, the employer would start to tell me a little bit about what they did. And I would become significantly less in less interested in that job after they really described my position. And I guess my lack of interest came across because like, as soon as I seemed less interested and I started asking more questions, like for example, I would ask, well, how many hours a day would you really expect me to be here past 6 p.m.? Or, or things like that that yeah. just kind of like, well, I, I feel like I was demonstrating like worth and value to them and their demeanor kind of changed like now I wasn't trying to sell myself to them but they were kind of also trying to demonstrate their value to me so as strange as it sounds if you can you know kind of turn the tables yeah, a little bit like that seeming not so desperate that, exactly I mean, that's really what we're talking yeah. about you you want to make it seem like you have options demonstrate and value that you yeah. you're bringing something to the table here exactly. um and and we're not talking about tipping over to being cocky or no, no, not at all. or in any way like aggressive or rude this is just about like showing your value being confident in your value and making them want to win you over a little bit too it's like a first date you both have to walk away with a good impression yeah, I mean, I mean, at the very least, you should ask them what the compensation is. If it's a job that the compensation is like uh, negotiable, if it's an unpaid internship, then you know from the beginning. Right. But if it's negotiable, you want to ask them what the compensation is. And just that question alone will kind of put some employers a little bit on the defensive because now they have to like defend how much they're going to be compensating you and it's just a, a good way to just shift the power structure during an interview so speaking of things from the employer perspective what are some things that you look for now that we are hiring people to work for us so i'm a little particular but one thing i re <laughs> <laughs> it's not for the video. <laughs> One thing that I really place a high emphasis on. Now, let me just say, in the last year, I have gone through like five employees because I was not an employer. I don't know how to lead, by example. I mean, I'm learning now, but yeah. being a boss is not actually that easy. That it's, that was a rude... It's kind of a pain in the ass, It was actually. a rude awakening for me uh, as as a business owner. But one thing that I really look for now is someone's ability to effectively communicate and write. Yeah. Your writing sample is like, for me, will make or break you. If I find errors in your writing sample, a document that you've had forever to, to, uh, to fine tune, to ask professors to review, I mean, there, it should be flawless. If that's flawed, that's a big red flag for mm. me. So actually, it might be that like professor in me, the teacher in me, that isn't really as important to me. If I like you, that's probably the number one thing. I have to yeah. like you. I have to want to work in the same space as you on a regular basis. And you demonstrate to me that you're hardworking and teachable. I can teach you how to write. Yeah. So that to me is not the number one thing I'm looking for. I want to. I'm looking for like, are you a good person who's gonna come in on time? And put in the effort that you need to do more maybe maybe like less technical skills and more like can I work with you to get you to the technical skills that you need that's yeah. that's where I place a really high value I mean during the interview I also look for someone's ability to respond to difficult questions under pressure I'll, I will intentionally ask questions that are difficult to answer and that don't have a right or wrong response just to see how the candidate or applicant deals with the pressure because they I will eventually want to train that person to take on more responsibilities and help me create systems and things like that so I need someone who could deal with the pressure and who could deal with um, changing circumstances without you know breaking down which <laughs> which has happened it happens all the time and I think for me with interns at this point we're at uh, the position in our law firm where we're thinking about growth in the not so distant future yeah. and i'm looking at someone a 2l who might be graduating in you know a year and a half or so could they potentially be a good fit like could they stay with us and and grow with us so i'm i'm looking for maybe a long-term fit also at Definitely. this point so really those are things you'd have to know going into your internship but you know for anyone looking to 
interview with Darian Stout. That's what we're looking for. <laughs> All right, and, and take this advice with a grain of salt. I'm sure in one year from now, I'll have gone through several more employees and I will have a completely new set of criteria by which I ju judge people who want to work for us. Yeah, but I think some good takeaways overall from what we said is to be prepared for your interview, right. do your research and practice to the extent that you can. Um, be confident and show your value during the interview and be likable make make them want to work with you especially honestly that's almost more important for internships than it is for jobs because interns can be more of a hassle than a help I didn't realize that when I was an intern but I could see it in the way I was treated yeah, sometimes definitely. and if they can't tolerate your presence they're not gonna hire hire you to have you around for the summer or for the semester so being likable and making sure that whatever writing sample you submit is Definitely. up to par. I mean, along those lines, this this is a little bit beyond the scope of this discussion, but I'll mention it anyway. When you read a job posting and there are specific instructions, make sure you follow all of the instructions. Read them more than once. I put out several job postings where I will ask for specific requirements like what are your salary or wage requirements, provide an updated resume, and write a couple sentences about why you think you will be a good fit. Um, out of 300 resumes, maybe nine of them followed those, all of, all of my requirements. So, I mean, that easily weeded out like 291 <laughs> applications. I didn't even open them because as soon as I put a job posting, within one day I have hundreds. I have to close the job posting so that I can get to like real emails in my in my mailbox. So I mean, just follow the instructions. Otherwise, no one's even going to read whatever you submit to them. Well, there you have it. Bonus tip from Mr. Darian: follow the instructions on the job posting. I think that's excellent advice. So we hope that you can take these tips and incorporate them as you are preparing for your internship interviews. And if you have any questions about this that you'd like us to answer, you can join our Facebook group or you can email me, carrieann at vincoprep.com. See you next week.